but you know the native son was put in the cemetery. The mayor wanted everything contextualized. Well, cemeteries contextualized. So it's the kind of thing when everybody can walk away with a win, and we don't have to report. We don't have to keep putting this in the newspaper. We don't have to keep getting together. It could be just over and done, and three entities will get together and work this out. So that's our appeal. If that doesn't happen, then we'll be moving forward with the lawsuit. Thank you. Do you propose to sue the city or a city park? What grounds? What grounds, yes. What I just said. No, what would the lawsuit entail exactly? Just that, that they failed to protect their assets, just like what the Lieutenant Governor said. They didn't protect their assets. They're, they're a nonprofit board. They have an obligation to protect their assets mm -hmm. as a nonprofit board, and this asset they let go. And, and I passed out some information here as a chronology. Uh, number two of the chronology look at and see that the CEO of City Park, before the mayor went to the city council, asked what would the mayor like us to do to give us some direction with the monument. That was passed in the buck for their, their obligations to maintain their assets. What is the latest um, decision? I don't, I don't think I can give anybody any firm thing. I think we'll see what happens over the next couple weeks, but I would say that if it's October 1st, you know, we still are where we are, then we'll probably have to move forward. But our hope is that people work this out. And the other lawsuits that have moved forward have not been successful. What would make this different? Uh, no one ever looked at the uh, land ownership and the property ownership of the statue. That was never done. Um, the information that we turned up in the last six months was never used, never put in court rooms before, ever. Um, I, I spoke earlier today, for example, there's a, the board minutes of City Park are phenomenal. They're so detailed, so, so in 1944, to bore you, the uh, president of the uh, New Orleans Public Service, Inc., wrote to the City Park president and said, we paid you $250 rent for the bar here by the Beauregard Circle. Please, there'll be no misunderstanding. We recognize you own the land. We'll never say that we own the land, and we'll make sure none of our successors say we own the land. And in the packet I gave you as well, there's a, uh, a letter from the city engineer, 1908 or something like that. City Park had already built this mound here. and put the monument out there. The city of New Orleans wanted to put the road to um, estimate straight into City Park. And, uh, Park says, no, you can't do that. You're not going to go through the monument. So let's go again back to the idea of New Orleans property. The city of New Orleans owned the property. They would have said, sorry, we're going through. They didn't. As you can see, they went around. Uh, multiple cases like that. Anytime the city wanted to widen Wisner Boulevard, they came to City Park. Anytime other things happened, they, they came to City Park to ask them to do that. The uh, Freeport McMahon Foundation gave money to the City Park for six years to take care of the monument, you know, the landscape. So everything's always gone through the city park. When the uh, monument was put on the National Register and there was a hearing up in Baton Rouge, nobody from the city of New Orleans went there. Representatives from city park went there. And as we know, city park, there was a sworn statement to the National Historic Register that the park owns the monument and owns the land upon which it sits. So there is a lot of confusion there, because nobody ever looked again, going back to the question of the court, for all this documentation. Best case scenario, you said Greenwood Cemetery? That's my understanding. I certainly can't speak for Greenwood Cemetery, but it was in the paper that I think a board member uh, released that information that Greenwood has said it was going to do it. I don't think really Greenwood responded to the one said that. Uh, that's my understanding that that was something that was in the mix, and all of a sudden it just disappeared as an option. Uh, 
How would members feel if it were, from this organization, feel if it were at Greenwood Cemetery? Well, the people that call out my association and others would be perfectly fine for the Greenwood Cemetery, yes. My name is Irvin Walls. I'm with the Louisiana Coalition for Change and Political Organization. Also, of that community activist, I've been involved with a lot of stuff in the city. And uh, I remember when the Saints had the Super Bowl, everybody was running around the police circle, and this was not an issue. I don't think really this became an issue because of tax dollars and uh, the information that went out to the African American community about the history of the slavery and uh, the revolt. But I think most African Americans understand the history. They're not. Uh, concern about uh, the monuments, even though they are concerned because it was tax dollars targeted, they figure that they shouldn't pay for it. Now, what I'm trying to understand is why haven't you reached out to some of the leaders in the African American community to come sit down to the table because they want closure to this just as much as you want closure. And history is history, you can't change that. I can't change what color I am, you can't change. We none choose our ancestral line. We all have histories that we probably are ashamed of some, some way in our history line. But I think we could all come together as human beings and put the best resources together and educate people rightly. And I think we can resolve this. I think you're stepping up doing a great thing. Uh, no one wants to walk over anybody's history. It's history is what it is. And uh, I think we can all get together as human beings and come to some conclusion we can resolve this. And we can educate our people that this will never happen again. So I think you're doing a noble thing. And uh, I'm here just to show my support to you this morning. I never liked it is this is just a win-win for the people who budget. It's not going back up. People goes to Greenwood in the public space. It's an issue that we don't have to go to court for. Uh, it's something that can be resolved, you know, without demonstrations like we see in other places. It can just it can just be done if these three people would get together in one room. That's all. With the lieutenant governor, the president of the city park board, and the mayor in a room. As soon as they can just get this thing resolved and put it to bed. Yes. A typical definition for due diligence would be what time frame? What is a typical months, weeks? Well, when the uh, mayor and the city agreed to do this, they gave it 30 days. Thank you. Anybody else? I think we're saying the way to have gotten all this was those city park had all the information and we should have looked at it in more detail instead of just saying take it and then we'll look at it right. else to do, you go read the city park minutes and go back to, you know, most of it between 1915 and 1970 and see they talk about, you know, the monument is, needs to be taken care of, the bushes are bad, what can we do, how can we raise money kind of stuff. Yes. And over on that uh, bench over there, I do have, but I made enough to people. I know that for television and stuff, print media and websites and stuff, to look at these things. Everything I gave you is original documents. Everything. The original documents City Park, the engineer, um, all of those things. Uh, letters from Nungesser, letters from City Park, letters from the city attorney, to just kind of track down how we got to where we are today. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you.
talked to Marksbury. Um, just had a press conference, and I'll surmise because I realized the volume was horrible on our end. Um, basically, saying that uh, you know that the a new Beauregard Monument Association is in the process of being formed, or may already be formed, and that is the, from descendants of the original association, which had raised the money and donated it to City Park. So there's a fiduciary responsibility, they believe, to the park board to take care of one of their assets. And if the park board doesn't, then the association has a, the ability to potentially bring another lawsuit against the board for lack of taking care of their assets. The hope is that the park and the city uh, will have discussions and work out with an entity to uh, get the monument uh, put up. There's different places that are in, in the works right now. So I'll just say my comment is that we need more transparency. If the, the city is having private negotiations, that does concern me because what does that say for Lee and Davis monuments? Would we be okay with a city negotiating privately with other entities that may not be so favorable if you're not wanting to see the monuments disparged? So Dr. Marksbury said that a cemetery is a proper context and that should meet the mayor's uh, desire to have it in a proper context, but I, I think that we might want to look at the whole process. Keep you posted. Thanks. <laughs> Still live, so you want to say something? I don't think I want to say. You're brilliant. Come on. I'll just say in the audience. I do. I do want to add in the audience today was George Smith, one of the best artists in New Orleans historically, and we actually uh, in the world, in, sir. In, in the world. The world. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me. Uh, I want to add though. Tommy Bruno is a big fan of yours. Oh, I'm a big fan of his. Too. And and he, I'm going to give you the mic. I'll put it here so it's a little bit closer to you because yeah. as you have you heard, Tommy is is doing a, a scale version of Lee. Yeah, I saw the photos. I wasn't here. I was off in the Highlands, uh, so I couldn't show up. But what do you what do you think about that? I think it's a great idea. That should he should uh, do additions, additions uh, uh, of of the piece, and sell them. At a high price. <laughs> For sure. And he really talked about the art, the artistic value, and he said, we haven't seen enough on artistic value. Well, the thing is, you know, you forget these monuments. This one, uh, the Borgard statue, Margaret statue, um, who else? Uh, Lee, obviously. Lee statue was done by a man named Alexander Doyle. He was one of the foremost uh, uh, American Renaissance sculptors of the period from Philadelphia. And these monuments not only represents, uh, uh, represent historical events, but they also were works of art. Absolutely. That has been destroyed by a Philistine man. And, and Tommy was really, he, he emphasized that, and I saw that in Dallas this weekend, there was a story about finally somebody was looking at the art value of these monuments nationwide. Oh, yeah, a, there was an article in Apollo magazine, it's a major art uh, historical magazine about that, uh, how important these pe pieces were. Now, it's written in a very high-toned, art-historical way, and I hardly understood half of it. <laughs> well, your level of understanding. Well, you know, <laughs> if, it looks good, if it looks good, it is good. You know what right, I mean? right. And these statues look great. And now they this, this whole, this complex here was a, uh, essentially Beaux-Arts. Without that piece, they've destroyed everything. In, in fact, the museum has been destroyed. Well, you know, as I, as I read the history, Beauregard actually was involved with the landscaping of the park. And that, before that museum went up, was when he was designing, working with Ansel, Victor Ansel, yeah. to design the park. So so his statue was the, was put in place there before that building existed. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is... It's not um, the other way around. Well, it's, uh, it's interesting. These, these, particularly Lee and Beauregard. Lee was at the end of the great Anglo-Saxon Avenue. Called St. Charles Avenue. That's yes. in the American part of, uh, of, uh, of, of, the, of the town at the period. In fact, I recommend to you an interview with a great uh, uncle of mine, uh, H. H. Go um, uh, no, H. R. Goldreve, who is on the board of the city of uh, Audubon Park, the Audubon Park Commission, the commission. And he talks about how finally the English speaking people in uh, New Orleans have a park. He meant Audubon Park. 
because the French had what was known as the Lola City Park, right? Right. So what you had in these two statues of Lee and Beauregard was a, a visualization of the cultural division in the city at the time. You had the great Anglo-Saxon oh, warrior, yes. and here you had the great, the great Napoleon in gray. Yes. Beauregard. So you know what Melanthor has done? Destroyed it. He has destroyed the whole poetry of the city. And you know, there's a gentleman uh, that's, that articulated that New Orleans really could be a, a world heritage site, and you remove the lung, the heart, and the kidneys by removing those three monuments. Oh yeah, it's uh, kind of like uh, it kind of reminds you of a, uh, we'll say seventh century Italy. You know, the barbarians have swooped in and they're, and they're slopping off the heads of all the all the statues that, that the Romans erected. You know, and like the uh, early Christian monks went around lopping off all the penises from the statues of Apollo. <laughs> I've actually seen an entire chest full of dicks <laughs> in, in the museum at, near Pompeii in, 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 Na in, in, uh, in Naples. And, uh, you know, but that's kind of what happens. There's, you know, there's obviously this uh, cultural ground shift here, and the artwork is what suffers the most. That is what Tom was saying, is that we... You look at the pieces, and New Orleans has 200 pieces of mo 200 monuments, 200 pieces of great art that we are letting be taken away. Oh yeah, that's exactly what's happening. And uh, by the, you know, it's uh, you know, in all our art, this is uh, form and content. Well, the form in this case was the Beaux Arts uh, Re uh, American Renaissance movement, and now we we don't have any. We don't have any of it. So just, I mean, what I'm thinking is, is we have case, case in point, you know, it was really, really ironic. An example of what I'm talking. About is that when they first put the, sta the uh, monument to, uh, to Martin Luther King <clears throat> up on Drive Street, excuse me, I mean Aretha Casimir Boulevard, uh, at the unveiling, one of the black ministers says, what the fuck is that? It's just like this big George amorphous, uh, oh sorry, <laughs> amoeba, you know, this amoeba, you know. Yeah. And so they realized that maybe they should have a, a, a monument that actually looked like Martin Luther King, right? As opposed to an amoeba with a with hundred hands. <laughs> Yeah. The amoeba was brought to you courtesy of the Arts Council. The other piece that's memorialed is brought, it's brought to you by the people themselves because they wanted a, a statue that looked like that looked like their hero. And that's what we and, heard today. This one gentleman uh, was he a minister that, that talked? Uh, but but we we saw that the cultures in which Tom Ooh, is a minister. Yeah, I shouldn't use that. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're live too. too. <laughs> but there, there, somebody articulated that. We don't need to destroy one. Tommy said this. You don't destroy one culture to uplift another. Tell that to the Visigoths, though. Because <laughs> right? what you're watching is it's a it's an ongoing uh, trope in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the in the in world culture. They they did the same thing back in the eighth century. The uh, iconoclasts went around destroying all the images of Jesus. It's the same thing. Uh, uh, you know, it doesn't quite fit your theory of the way history should go. So you destroy most of it. Yes. You destroy the artifacts. And, and actually, what we're seeing right now is, is, is I studied these guys. Beauregard, 1873, wanted desegregation. It doesn't fit, so they destroy that. They, they want to portray that this Jim Crow era was only people who were trying to suppress people. And you have heroes like mm -hmm. Beauregard who were saying, we're going to uplift everybody. We're going we're gonna to have one flag. We're going to do all this other stuff. But it doesn't fit the narrative is what someone said. Well, you know, it's interesting because the, uh, the Romans, we mentioned this earlier, the in, the, in antiquity, uh, Augustus had an enemy that had a statue erected to him, the enemy, uh, in uh, northern uh, Italy. And I forget the I forget um, what source this is, uh, Plutarch's lives or something like that. And uh, they said, well, should we knock it down, sir? He says, no, keep it. looks great. Now, that's an enlightened rule. We don't have one here. Take it down because <laughs> it, it, it might yes. get me votes. That's why he did it. That's why I did it. And, and you know, the Landrews are not noted for their cultural depth. Uh, you know, Landrew, uh, uh, his father, was behind the Riverfront Expressway. I, I remember reading about that. He was that all in favor of it. It destroyed the French Quarter. Yeah. Yes. But they thought it was good at, good at the time. It was it seemed like the naked man that jumped in the rose bush. It seemed a good idea at the time. Right. <laughs> well, George, I want to thank you because I've oh, been okay. on for a while. And it will be touched. And uh, your gallery, what's the address? Six what? 626 Julia Street. All right. You have some amazing art there from a, a period where jazz was created. I, I love your work on Nick LaRocca. Oh, I have a uh, picture right now. It's called Discovery of the First Jazz Man. It's a Nick LaRocca. Uh, your, your, your work At is phenomenal. At the corner of Canal and Royal. All right. <laughs>
All right, we'll be. So you know what Nick LaRocca did? What did he do? He gave every musician in this town, black and white, a job in Chicago and New York, where they could be paid real money for what they would do. He was phenomenal man. Uh -huh. he was, you know, what he did to promote jazz is yeah. unbelievable. Yep, even named it. He did. Mm -hmm. Okay, All see right. you later. Thanks. Oh, wait, I got your mic. I'm going to walk.